Welcome back to your listening to Radio Rebel Season 3. This is Update 9, and it's called Being a Creator. Hot and sunny in Spain, a quick bout with a virus, well, quick as relative, actually had lingering symptoms for three full weeks. The voice was raspy, so didn't want to record anything. It's a petty excuse, but it's all I've got. What else? Hmm, harvesting tomatoes and canning them. Looking for work, cleaning the pool and tending the garden. Thinking about that pillar I have to pour a new foundation for before the end of autumn. Feeling like I'm on vacation, even though I'm not on vacation. Hazy, lazy, crazy days of summer, I guess. And trying to figure out if I am a creator. You hear that ting? That's my audio version of air quotes. You'll hear it throughout this episode. That's a word, creator, that seems to have taken on a life of its own in the past decade or so. It was actually the name of one of our children's games back when I was a kid. Creator, or was it creation? One of the two. This game involved us sitting in the shade under the eaves of the farmhouse on a day following a rainstorm. There were no gutters on that roof, so the rain simply sloughed off to the ground, leaving a long, narrow patch of soft mud, mud that was extra interesting to us as it also contained tiny chips of ceramic stone granules that had come loose from the asphalt shingles and washed off. That mud glittered a deep green. It looked like life. We would sit in the shade there and scoop out this fine mud granule material and form it into dolls or babies. We made bodies, attached legs and arms and heads. Mine tended to be somewhat elaborate. Arms and legs were made by molding the mud around sticks that would serve as bones. The torso was hollow and care was taken in making an esophagus that would let food enter through the mouth and end up in that primitive stomach. Then, in the best biblical fashion, I would place my mouth over the mouth of the mud baby and try to breathe life into it. Did I know I was trying to make a golem? No, didn't know the golem was a thing, until the early 1980s when I saw F. Murray Abraham at the Shakespeare in the Park production of The Golem. I watch about two hours of YouTube every day. I don't consider it a social platform. Is YouTube a social platform? It's kind of a housing for a lot of videos with a powerful search engine. I'm subscribed to several channels. I have to tell you how I end up clicking on the subscribe button. It's a pretty straightforward process. I watch a video. I find it interesting or funny or helpful. I like the quality of the production. I probably like the person who has made or appeared in the video. I won't subscribe at once, though. One video is hardly enough to convince me that I want to see more. I might go to the channel and look at a couple of other videos by the same creator, but the most likely scenario is that I don't bother. I'll wait until I notice that that person has uploaded a new video. I ignore like and subscribe requests, though I've seen a couple of fairly creative ones that did contribute to my decision to finally subscribe. Like the way a storyteller introduces the idea of subscribing or liking, he doesn't tell you directly to smash the like button. He instead suggests how you can put the like button through hell, or at least make it very uncomfortable. He indirectly personifies the like button and then tells you to ring its doorbell and leave a fiery bag of dog poop on the welcome mat and run and hide in the bushes to watch it stamp out the burning goo. That, along with this man's storytelling talent and the types of stories themselves, plus seeing a consistency in his creative process, finally led me to click on subscribe. But I don't click on the notification bell. I don't want to be notified about anything. The subscription list is convenient when I've gone through all the suggested videos on my home page. You know, those videos that show up because you've been watching similar content for a few days. When those get repetitive, I might check out my subscription list to see what any of those creators have been up to. Most of what I watch I classify as handyman-type videos. You know, furniture restoration, house renovation, painting restoration, how things are made, Japanese crafts, people mowing overgrown lawns. 
Some of the creators involved have recently spoken out about the actual process of creation. One talks about how much effort goes into the actual filming of video that will later need to be edited. Another talks about comments left by those who have seen the video, both bad and good ones. Another wonders aloud if what he is producing is what users are wanting to see, or if it is just something that YouTube wants to show. And that last one is what I'm thinking about. I've made a lot of videos that probably appeal to a very small audience. I make them the way I want to make them. Of course, I have looked carefully at videos made by creators that seem to be well-liked, have a lot of subscribers, get that like button smashed. I am also aware of the need to tweak some of that content so that clunky search engine can categorize and share my content with potential viewers. There, I've added another word in air quotes. Content. And I do call the YouTube search engine clunky. Let me explain why. It seems to me that despite all the hang-wringing, and I like this one, pearl-clutching, over artificial intelligence, no one has bothered to realize that what real people write or film or produce is being warped, badly molded, by the limitations of that very A.I. A writer can no longer simply sit down and write an essay about something without keeping in mind how it must be structured in order to help A.I. find the essay and make it available to potential readers. A video maker can't just concentrate on images and sounds and effects and music. He or she must remember to ask the viewer to listen, like, subscribe, and share. That is because AI has been told what to look for, and that which it is looking for is not based upon any creative juices. That's why creator is in air quotes. If the verb create means to bring something into existence, to produce through imaginative skill, to make or bring into existence something new, thank you, Webster's, then calling content creators creators is a misuse of that word. Because as creative as we would all like to think ourselves, our creativity is being molded and restricted by a set of rules, norms, structures that have nothing to do with creating and everything to do with communicating with a rapid thinking but pretty dumb AI that will categorize and index our content. Content, on the other hand, has become an apt word, definition 1c on Webster's site, The principal substance, such as written matter, illustrations, or music, offered by a website. I'd like to think that this use, which must certainly be recent, seems a late 20th century use, is somehow related to definition 2c. The events, physical detail, and information in a work of art. But I somehow doubt that. Anyway, what I'm really bitching about here is my struggle with trying to create what I want to create based upon my skills, knowledge, and creative mindset, while realizing that none of that is recognizable to AI as a value. One discussion I've read through on Reddit points out that YouTube considers anything that keeps a user on the platform or encourages the user to click on something as content. That is, it doesn't matter what that material is, if a user looks at it or clicks on it, then it is content. We used to call content things like essays, short stories, novels, movies, cartoons, paintings, photographs, even copy. Nowadays, everything we upload for human consumption on the internet is content, and we are its creators. And because we need to make that material recognizable, readable for the filter that is AI, which is evidently short on interpretative skills, we have to make sure we include silly words like listen, like, subscribe, and share that have nothing to do with what we are creating. I do think there have been predecessors to this. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Sponsors? You mean advertisers, the ones footing the bill? Or let's take a station break. 
or a recent Unnecessary Except by Law ID and Billboard on the David Letterman show from 1982. We, we have to pause here for station identification. That's got a nice poetic sound to it. Of course, back in those good old days, we had TV Guide to help us find and then plan our content consumption. Now those creators who try to make a living with YouTube are breaking into their own content with material originating in sponsors. Just can't get away from ad-based production, I guess. But who's going to sponsor me? What product would want to associate with a bunch of stories from my own personal growing into manhood experience? Blue tip matches? The Boy Scouts of America? Paps Blue Ribbon Beer? Not going to happen. I've been looking around for some group of old men and women like me, people who don't consider what they do to be content, but do consider themselves as creators. Maybe those kinds of early internet creators who unknowingly were producing UGC, user-generated content, that which would die a slow death with the onset of standard web page design and SEO. Now that we've got sites like Wix and WordPress and Squarespace, we don't have to worry if our look is right. With platforms like YouTube and Vimeo, we don't have to worry about getting film cans to cinemas. But we do have to worry about that slow, stupid, eighth-grade reader that is AI, that technological monster that is too big for its britches, thinks it's smart, but is really limited to H1 headers and keywords and question-answer format. Ask AI to write a poem, and it will certainly make sure the iambic pentameter is perfect and that the lines end with a rhyme. Here's one about birds in my plum tree. In plum tree's arms, two birds with feathers bright engage in skirmish, vying for their space. Their wings clash, beaks cross in aerial chase, a dance of rivals, nature's ancient rite. Amidst the blooms, this battle takes its flight, in twilight's glow, they lie with fervent grace. Well, not bad. The third line struggles a bit with the rhythm, and I'm not sure I like the A, B, B, A, A, B rhyme, but the images are fairly cool. Was it created, though? Is it content? What I want is to meet others who simply create, who scorn the same things that I scorn, who want to be found on the internet without having to add keywords or headers or beg those that have found their creations to click on this button or check out this or that sponsor's product or service. I'll keep looking, I guess. Uh, are you one of them? Please contact me. I can't be the only one out here. Thanks for listening. And do what the ditty at the end says. If you want to, it's not required. Cheers. You're listening to Radio Rebel. Listen, like, subscribe, and share.